Menghadap Duli Yang Maha Mulia Paduka Sri Sultan Perak Darul Rizwan Sultan Nasrin Mu Muizuddin Shah Ibni Almarhum Sultan Aslan Muhibuddin Shah Al Magfullah Timbalan Yang Di Pertuan Agong Ampun Tuanku Patik ingin memohon perkenan tuanku untuk menyampaikan sembah ucapan kepada para hadirin dalam bahasa Inggeris. Your Majesty, we are deeply honoured and privileged by the presence of Your Majesty here today at our Leadership Energy Summit Asia 2018. Eclif wishes to express our great appreciation to Your Majesty for accepting to deliver the keynote address at this summit. Allow me to welcome Yang Berhormat Said Sadiq Said Abdul Rahman, Minister of Youth and Sports, the members of Eclif Board of Directors and Advisory Council, our honoured speakers and dignitaries from around the world, members of the media, and to you, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leadership Energy Summit Asia 2018, and welcome to the new Malaysia. This era that we have just entered is one of great promise and potential, but it is also one that is fraught with unique and unprecedented challenges. After all, when change happens, it brings with it, for some, renewed energy to forge ahead, and for others, a feeling of venturing into the unknown. It is simultaneously exhilarating and intimidating, and even more so for leaders who must deal with this environment of uncertainty, knowing that managing it well can transform unpredictability into opportunities. In order to do this, such leaders must be driven by something more than personal or professional gain. This is because the process is long and arduous. Those on a transformation journey will often encounter many unexpected circumstances at every turn. For those looking for short-term fortune or fame or glory will quickly come to realize that it is, isn't going to happen easily. These will be the first to falter in the face of adversity, as they have no real source from which they can derive the necessary energy to keep going when the odds are against them. Instead, those with a strong sense of purpose that is deeply rooted in enduring values collaced into a vision for the future will find themselves constantly energized as they forge their way forward. At ECLIF, we call this leadership energy and at its core motivation behind the Leadership Energy Summit. This year's event focuses on empowering and inspiring leaders to cut through the adversity of the current times in order to build a better tomorrow. It is therefore timely and relevant more than ever before because when times change, leaders and the way they view, practice and apply leadership will also need to change. Important for this to, is 
to overcome the fear of failure. Leaders in this new world must give themselves space to make mistakes, and there may be many mistakes made as we navigate our way through this new landscape to discover what works and what doesn't, and more importantly, realize that what used to work may no longer apply in this new environment. Who better to enlighten us on this subject than Dr. Samuel West, founding director and curator of the Museum of Failure, who will be speaking on how failure helps to drive innovation. Time and again, we have seen that failures have led to extraordinary breakthroughs. Leaders should nevertheless equip themselves with the insights that can help them prepare for the future, or better yet, capabilities that will allow them to shape it. Futurist and best-selling author Brett King, who is also amongst our lineup of acclaimed speakers, is just the right person to lay out what this entails. There is, however, one line of business in which failure needs to be avoided. And that is the business that I have been in for more than three decades. That is the business of central banking, in which there's zero tolerance for failure. And this is because we are entrusted to manage the financial system and the economy. And any failure to deliver the expected outcomes will not only affect every business in our economy, but also the society at large. And it could even affect our neighboring countries. Mistakes in our policies and actions, or inaction for that matter, can have catastrophic and widespread damaging repercussions. To avoid this, significant resources are therefore directed to risk management and scenario analysis. And this is so that we manage the risks confronting us, and there are many risks on the horizon, and so that we are always in a state of readiness for any eventuality. Our world, however, is very different from yours. However, one of the most important aspects that is timeless and universal, even to central bankers, is the aspect of leadership that is integral and fundamental, the value of trust, something that has much lost its luster, unfortunately, in recent times. Leaders of today, both in the private and public sector, need to work even harder than before to regain the trust of their community. Without trust, there would no, be no leadership. Stephen Covey, New York Times and Wall Street Journal best-selling author of The Speed of Trust, gives recognition to just how valuable it is. And after listening to him, I'm sure you will do so too. From the paradigm shifting perspectives and incisive innovative ideas to fascinating forums and even a lively debate between two larger than life personalities, world renowned CNN anchor Richard Quest and Rajiv Peshwara, uh, CEO of Ecliff, I hope that this year's event will be groundbreaking for all of us as we work towards building a foundation for a brand new leadership status quo that will take us far into the future. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce our next very distinguished speakers, His Majesty Duliyang Mahamulia Sultan Nazrin Muizuddin Shah, Binti Al-Marhum 
Sultan Aslan Muhibuddin Shah al Magfurla, Deputy Yang Dipertuan Agong. His Majesty is well known to most of us and needs no introduction. However, it would only be appropriate uh, to highlight the many credits His Majesty has earned not only as the Deputy Yang Dipertuan Agong and Sultan of Parak. Darul Rizwan, but through his own personal achievements. His Majesty, an alumnus of Oxford University, graduated with honours in his bachelor degree in philosophy, politics and economics, has also served in other capacities at Oxford, including as a fellow of the Chancellor's Court of Benefactors as, and as Vice Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Oxford Centre for Islamic Studies. In October this year, His Majesty was appointed the Patron of Oxford University Centre of Southeast Asia Studies. His Majesty also holds a master's degree from Harvard University in public administration and a doctorate in political economy and government also from Harvard University. His Majesty is also the Colonel-in-Chief of the Regiment of Royal Engineers and of the Royal Medical Corps in the Malaysian Armed Forces and currently serves as the Chancellor in University of Malaya. His Majesty is an active scholar with long-standing interests in Malaysia's socio-economic development and its surrounding region and in the global development of Islamic finance. As the Royal Patron for Islamic Finance, His Royal Highness has contributed immensely for more than a decade, enhancing the greater awareness of the benefits that Islamic finance brings and towards the strengthening of global connectivity between the important international financial centers that participates in this form of finance. His Royal Highness is also the author of Charting the Economy and has published academic papers on Malaysia's history and the economy. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me to invite Duli Yang Mahamulia Sultan Nasrin Muizuddin Shah, Ibni Almarhum Sultan Aslan Muhibuddin Shah Al Magufla, uh, Deputy Yang Di Pertuan Agong, to deliver his keynote address, Ampun Tuanku.